Good evening, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode here at Wildman Lips. I'm your host, Wildman. Now on today's episode, Frank the Carnivore and myself went to the gym yet again, but this time we did back squats together in giant set format. Now I was doing my typical low bar back squats. That's where the barbell is sitting more on the rear delts in a shelf-like manner, and that pitches you a little bit more forward, which makes you a little bit harder to get to full depth or to complete a full range of motion, but you're using more muscles, so that kind of counters it. And since you're not going down to full depth, you're actually able to lift more weight. Now, Frank, he was actually doing the high bar squat. The high bar squat is when it sits directly on your traps. Now, this is a little bit uncomfortable. However, you're a little bit more upright, so it makes it easier to achieve depth a lot deeper, and you're getting a much better full range of motion. Now, a lot of athletes like to use the high bar squat versus the low bar squat. But in powerlifting competitions, they typically like to do low bar back squats because all you have to do is just achieve slightly below parallel and you'll be able to make the lift. So since you're in a little bit better of a position and you're using more muscles, it makes a lot more sense to do it in that way. However, high bar carries over a lot more into athletic sports, such as basketball, football, baseball, and any other sport you can think of. So let's pop in. Let's show you the differences between the two. Now on today's giant set, I was doing the back squat. And like I said before, I was doing it in a low bar style, but I was doing a tough six. So essentially I wanted to work up to a tough six reps, which I had in mind was 315 pounds. And that's what I was going to focus on today. And in between my sets, I was going to be doing some pull-ups where I hang from a dead hang and then pull myself up as fast as I can and lower myself down slowly in order to prepare myself and to better my strap deadlifts because that's the same motion. And I was going to be doing some weighted step ups to work my obliques, to work my legs, but to also work my shoulder mobility as it's hanging down. And that was going to be the giant set for the day. Now, Frank, on the other hand, was going to be using a different style, which is the style that we were talking about before, which is a high bar back squat. And today he just kind of wanted to see how much he could lift with a high bar back squat versus a low bar back squat. And he wanted to see what kind of difference he felt because we've been talking a lot about the high bar back squat lately and he likes that it carries over into athletics a lot better than the low bar back squat, which is technically true and technically not. Because I consider myself pretty athletic and I like to low bar back squat. The main thing that you got to focus on, no matter which style of back squat you're trying to do, whether it's high bar and it's sitting on your traps or it's low bar where it's sitting on your rear delts like a shelf, is the depth. As long as you're achieving parallel or below parallel, you're going to get all the benefits of having the back squat in your repertoire with no matter what you're training for, whether it's for athletics or for strength sports. So really what it's going to come down to is what are you more comfortable with? Are you more comfortable with it sitting on your traps and being a little bit more upright? Is that where you're most powerful? But there's some bodies that can do that, right? it's a little too heavy on the neck and it feels uncomfortable versus with the low bar back squat where it just sits comfortably on that shelf on the back about three inches down from your traps that makes it a lot easier to get into a much more powerful position where you're able to use a lot more of your posterior chain and a lot more legs involved and that's why a lot of people would like to low bar back squat however the controversial side of it is you do have to have a lot more shoulder mobility in a high bar back squat, the bar is gonna be sitting on those traps. So you're gonna be able to get your elbows almost directly underneath the bar. Versus with a low bar back squat, you're gonna to have to bring your elbows backwards in order to create a shelf for that bar to sit on. And a lot of people just don't have that mobility. So they end up putting their hands out a lot wider than what they need to be. And that's what you see a lot of cases with strongman and with the heavy weights and powerlifting, they put their hands out super wide. So that way they're able to get underneath the bar a lot more powerful. But I like to use the low bar as an example and as a test to see where my shoulder mobility is because I work a lot on shoulder mobility. 
And since my shoulder mobility is good, I'm able to get into a good position with the low bar and I'm able to squat down to the low parallel simply because my shoulder mobility is very good. It's not the best, but it's more decent compared to most guys my size. So this is gonna be Frank's top set for the day with a high bar back squat, which is gonna be 275 pounds. And as you can see, that guy next to us was doing the Smith machine. I really don't recommend Smith machines when doing a back squat. But you can see here, that was really tough for Frank to do, right? So then Frank decided to switch over without a belt, without gear this whole entire time to do a low bar back squat. And there I am getting in frame because I wanna make sure that he does this lift correctly. But you can see, look how much more powerful he is in a low bar back squat. And that's just another testament to if you have good mobility like Frank does, you're going to be okay. Now this is going to be my top set for the day, which is 315 pounds in a low bar back squat. And you can see now that I'm a little bit tired from doing all of those pull ups and those weighted step ups in between my squats, I'm only going to parallel, which was fine. And I am wearing a belt, but no knee sleeves at all. I really wanted to work those quads today, and I really did feel a lot of work happening in my quads. So mission accomplished, and I was able to bang out all six reps. Today was supposed to be a light day anyways, so today was supposed to be a tough six with 315 pounds. And like I said, doing pull-ups and doing those weighted step ups in between really tired me out, but that's the whole point of working out, right? Is you're supposed to be tired. And all of these things will carry over into the back squat and also into my deadlift. And speaking of that, for the Variation Giant set, we were doing the leg press. And we were just gonna keep adding 45 pound plates all the way up until we can't do six reps anymore. And Frank was doing this with me and we continued to do pull-ups and weighted step-ups in between every one of these leg presses. And not only does the leg press really build your leg strength, because you can see like it's gonna be pretty easy to do five plates for, for me specifically, which is way more than I could squat. But it also carries a lot more into deadlift. And that's why I love doing the leg press machine. Because that 45 degree angle that that bench is at and all that overloading you're doing on your legs really carries over into to the deadlift as well. So that's why I love doing that. This was Frank's top set, which is four plates. It was really good for him. I was very surprised that he was able to be this strong, especially from not weightlifting a lot. And I did five plates as my top six for the day. That seemed just about right, which is the most reps I've ever done before. Doing that much volume on the back squat and doing this much volume with heavy weight on the leg press machine. So all these things are designed to not only build my back squat and my leg strength, but it's also designed to carry over into my deadlift. And that's why I like training in this particular giant set format and particularly using the low bar back squat. All right, so there you have it. So depending upon what your goal is, if you are trying to train for sports or you're trying to train for more strength competitions like powerlifting or strongman, really that bar position is gonna depend on you. But at least you have options now and you can see what the differences are between the two for your next gym session. Really appreciate everybody stopping by and I will see you next time. Thank you.